What is up guys and girls, we're here again for another beginner's tutorial. Today we're gonna to work on a very widely requested technique, a very, very, very widely requested technique. And that technique is the crossover. Now Horford, trying to go step for step with Kemba, that's a bad idea. Kemba, another three pointer. No, 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 not that sort of crossover, basketball fans. No, we're talking crossovers with our jump ropes. guys and girls we're here again for another beginners tutorial I believe this is the fifth in the series or maybe the sixth so we're going strong today we're gonna to work on a very widely requested technique and that technique is the crossover so first off I want to give a big uh, mention to Kenji and to Willemo who requested this video albeit a few months back but better late than never um, you know, sometimes I think if it's not for you guys requesting videos, I'd be sat in a dark room, twiddling my thumbs. Bored stiffless. So, it provides a lot of context for me, so I appreciate that. Alright, so first I'm going to demonstrate this technique, and then we're going to break it down, and we're going to figure out how to do it. So that was our crossover. Now, a few things we've got to mention about the crossover first. As always, technique over speed. We never want to sacrifice technique for speed, okay? You make sure you've got your technique down and then you move into accelerating and picking things up. The annoying thing is that with the crossover, because because you're using the rope to cross in front of your body, it means that when you mess up, the next place that rope is going is either to your chest or to your back. More from the noise to your back because the rope is moving around like this. And so that means it's a very painful technique to learn, okay? When you fail, when you fail, um, it hurts, you know? It, it's not just a bruise to the ego, it's more often than not a bruise to the back, a bruise to the legs, and so on and so forth. So it's a painful one to learn, right? Because when you mess up, more often than not, you have to take a, a 10 second time out <laughs> before getting back into it. As well as that, um, it's not, it doesn't really incentivize you to keep trying. So first thing I'd say, and this might sound like a silly suggestion, is try when you're first learning to um, wear something thick wear a jumper or wear a hoodie or something just to minimize that painful aspect as much as possible um, you know anything that stops us from trying we, we need to cut off and get, get out as minimized as much as possible in this case the pain will stop us from trying and therefore stop us from learning first thing I'm gonna say is this whenever I'm coaching people I tell them to start out with what I call side swing one, which is side swinging with the rope in one hand, okay? What this allows you to do is to practice movements without the um, not so pleasant aspect of if the rope gets caught, it will hit me. So I'll demonstrate side swing one here and how that can apply to your crossover training. So that's the first thing you want to do. It gets you more familiar with the movement of the crossover. It gets you more familiar with where you should position your hands and 
where you position your hands is the next point. So the thing that tends to get people when they're doing a crossover is when they're moving from their regular skip to the cross, you te the tendency is for your hands to come upwards, right? You're going from here up to here. And the problem with that is when you raise your hands, you're raising um, that rope's point of contact. And so more often than not, you're gonna raise it a bit higher than you're used to, and it's gonna catch your foot. And that's where the beginning of frustration begins. So as always, we wanna keep our handles around the hip bone region. In fact, you know what? Let me demonstrate that, that issue for you so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. You see that the hands raised from here this level to up here okay so and that's fine that's that's naturally where your hands would go when you're crossing the rope but the rope doesn't like that too much because you're changing the handle positioning you need to keep the handle positioning in roughly the same area and the way to do this is to tilt your torso forward slightly okay so what you're doing is you're going Rather than crossing like this, you're tilting forward slightly and coming down to here, okay? What that will do is it will allow you to adjust your hand positioning and make sure it's in the right region. I hope that's clear. Another thing you'll find is that tilting may actually um, get you into a nice rhythm where you can build momentum, just tilting forward with each cross to help you speed up your crosses. So. Um, I'm going to demonstrate that tilt for you so you get a better idea of what I mean. Alright, so it's just a slight, a slight tilt, okay? We're not overextending because then we're struggling to get back and forth it's just a slight tilt just so that you can get your hand positioning down a bit the third thing is the positioning of your hands as you swing them across okay you really want to get your hands across almost like you're giving yourself a hug you want to get your hands across if you don't fully dedicate and you bring your hands to maybe about here you're really narrowing that gap um, that the rope creates and giving yourself less room to jump through. So, so we want to jump here, really get across, okay? Really get across. If you're here, if you do that, you're not giving yourself enough room to jump, okay? Positioning of the hands, positioning of the hands is key. Um, a bonus tip. Something that's not widely spoken about. We need to get into the habit of thinking about our handles and not about our hands, okay? It's not all about you. The rope needs love too. That rhymed actually. No, but on a serious note, it's the positioning of the handle that dictates where the rope goes, not your hands, okay? So, you can have your hands in the right positions all the way across, but if you've got your handle pointed upwards or pointed, pointed outwards like so, um, you're gonna have problems. We always say we wanna have that handle pointed out at a 90 degree angle from the body like so, whether you're here or you're crossed, you wanna make sure that's pointed outwards because that's gonna dictate where the rope is gonna travel, okay? So think more about where you're having your um, handles positioned. One thing that might help is that you wanna think of pointing, if you were to point your fingers either side of you or like this, that's where you want your handle to be. You want it to be a 90 degree angle from your body, okay? Either side. And that's about it, crossovers. Done, check, we've done that. Um, another in the tutorial series give that a try let me know how you get on eventually once you get more advanced with that 
we'll use those same principles to do our crossover backwards. Okay, um, quick demonstration. same hand positioning um, and such like but there are a few other details which we'll go into but that will be for another video so I want to thank you again for tuning in to watch this video um, if anything at all was helpful any tips that were given anything that may have shed light on mistakes you're making drop it in the comments let me know communicate with me I'm always up for chatting with you guys um, it also does help me when you comment and let me know what you want to see in future videos so please do so if there's anything on your mind nothing's too small nothing's too great i hope don't test me for more videos like these of course subscribe so that you get notified as soon as they drop um, and that's it until next time all the best with your training and stay raging Not that sort of crossover. Basketball fans. Michael Jordans. <laughs> LeBron James. Sometimes I think that if it weren't for your requests, I'd be sat, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed? No. <laughs> fingers crossed. I'd be sat, twiddling my thumbs. Kyrie Irvings. I just got myself in the face, in the fucking face.